This is Jimmy, and as much as I'm holding on to Jimmy, Jimmy's holding on to me. And that must mean we're talking about the top five arboreal snakes. My name's Adam, this is Jimmy. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Now, if you're looking for a snake that's gonna hold on to you as much as you hold on to them, you're looking for an arboreal snake and there's a lot of really great options. So let's just start off with number five. I want not to be super technical before we start. Some of these are gonna be semi-arboreal, but I think you get the idea. And we're gonna start off with some more difficult ones and then move over to the easier ones, or at least I think. Starting off with number five, no, not this. We're talking about reticulated pythons. Reticulated pythons are some of the longest snakes in the entire world, or actually it is the longest species of snake in the entire world. Reticulated python babies come out bigger than this. And if you're wondering what this is, we're gonna get to it in like four minutes. Retics come from parts of Indonesia, parts of Asia in that vicinity. Now there's a bunch of different locales. There's the mainland ones, which get giant. And then there's dwarf and super dwarf ones. And those are a little bit more manageable in my opinion. You are hilarious. I love arboreal snakes. They're so much fun to watch. Now for sure, some people are gonna fight me and say that, no, reticulate pythons aren't arboreal. Well, they're semi-arboreal. And if you give them height, they will use it. I promise you. We all saw what Barchuk did in his zoo and his reticulated python is usually in the trees or on the perches that are given to him, which is kind of amazing considering for the most part, these things are kept in kind of terrestrial, very small enclosures for the size because an animal that might get to 20 feet I hate to break it to you, but they need something bigger than eight feet long to be happy. Sorry. Now a dwarf or a super dwarf could easily fit into an eight foot enclosure or maybe even a six foot enclosure, depending on how small it is. Oh, this is the new reptile room, by the way. It's almost done. It's a little bit echoey. We're gonna sound treat it. If it's too echoey, let me know in the comments and we won't do any more videos. But if you wanna see a whole room tour, hit the like button and leave a comment and we'll do one. Soon. I'll keep it short on retics because we just talked about them. Beautiful markings, beautiful pattern, tons and tons of morphs that you can choose from. Absolutely amazing. But I think because of, well, their intelligence, they are a little bit different and a little bit cooler than a lot of other species and more unique for that reason. I like Burmese pythons because they're the gentle giants. Reticulated pythons show a little bit more personality, let's say. And of course, uh, they do have a high, high food drive. Before we move on to number two, let's switch co-hosts here. Come on. This is Pikachu. He's not gonna make the list because he's not arboreally enough for the arboreal club, but uh, Jimmy's getting a little squirmy. So let's move on to number two. Number four, a very unique and common pet snake, carpet pythons. Now these are some of the most beautiful naturally occurring species in terms of just how they naturally look in the wild. They do come in a bunch of different morphs, different localities as well, all over Australia, Indonesia, New Guinea, just kind of that type of area of the world. And if you want a big carpet python, get a coastal. These things are nine feet sometimes. If you want a small one, Eri and Jaya sometimes top out at five feet. So there's one basically for everybody. Now, the number one thing I will say that make them a great pet, especially if you want an arboreal snake and you're a beginner, is simply that they're common, they're easily found, and they're great eaters. My number one gripe with Pikachu is that he goes on hunger strike for five months every year, like clockwork. A lot of my other ball pythons will, and some of them don't at all. So they're kind of unpredictable. One thing that you can predict with a carpet python, if you put a rat in the enclosure, it'll disappear like magic. And I'm a big fan of putting rats in enclosures and watching them disappear. I like magic. I don't like wasting rats basically is one thing too. And if you only have one snake, this is important. Something cool about them is they are a larger snake that isn't so large it's ridiculous, like a reticulated python, for example, that you could have them in an enclosure that if you have a smaller version, you can just buy. There's a lot of companies that do buy them. Cages, for example, is a great company. I use their enclosures. There's a link below if you want one. But if you get a larger one, you might get into custom making territory. A coastal carpet python is pretty big. They need a pretty big enclosure. I mean, it's nine feet, right? So it might be a custom made thing or a at least make it yourself type thing. Now, the one thing I will say is that they do get a bad rap for being a little bit of a grumpy Gus, some of them. I don't think this is totally 
the way that it should be. I don't think that they are as bad in terms of their temperament as the rap that they get. So I think that if you are someone who works with your snake from a young age, you're gonna have a very handleable animal, maybe not as handleable as a ball python right out of the egg, but a very nice snake that you can handle, that you can enjoy, and that you can hand off to even a child if you're supervising that child. Don't, don't get a child to babysit your snake. It's bad, I, don't do it. Oh, and if you're wondering where they get the name carpet python, that really cool patterning on them, it looks like an oriental carpet, or that's what people thought back in the day, so therefore, carpet python. What do you think, Pikachu? Should we take a little intermission here and talk about NordVPN, who is a sponsor of today's video. NordVPN is a virtual private network that secures and encrypts all of your data and internet traffic. And then this traffic is routed through a remote server. Basically what this means is if you don't wanna be snooped on, NordVPN is the right service for you. Now, even if you're not super worried about snooping, are you worried about maybe like saving a couple bucks or getting access to things that maybe you're not supposed to? You can change your virtual location with NordVPN. Basically what this means is if you are say in Canada or you're in the US, but your favorite show is on Netflix only in the UK, just change your location, pretend that you're in London. You're basically a world traveler right from your couch. A giant selling point, and the reason that I made the switch over to NordVPN, my internet company was trying to throttle my internet speeds. With NordVPN, because of the way it's encrypted, they can't do that to you anymore. I've got fast internet no matter how much I use. And right now, if you use the link below, you get a two-year plan for a ridiculously discounted price. NordVPN has your back. I love this service. I never use a computer without it. Thanks NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Number three, and probably the second most common constrictor type snake, besides the ball python, BCIs and BCCs. We're talking about boa constrictors. Now we'll give you the opportunity here to choose which is best for you, obviously. BCCs, boa constrictor constrictor, which I think is just shortened to BC boa constrictor and boa emperators. Now the difference is locality and also BCs are gonna grow bigger, up to 14 feet, some people will say. These are outliers. Normally they'll top out 10 to 12 foot and females are bigger than males. And then there's the BCIs or the boa emperators. And these guys usually are smaller. Again, males smaller than females. And there are certain localities that are from islands, like the Hog Island boa, that are very small. Now this isn't the smallest BCI that there is, but it is the smallest common one that you'll find easily and you don't have to spend a million dollars to buy. And something like that might top out at five or six feet. So it's a pretty big difference, a five foot snake compared to a 12 or 14 foot snake on the outlier side. So it's really up to you. The difference too is the coloration. You get something like a Guyanese BC and the red on the tail is ridiculous. If you get something just kind of like a regular common boa, they'll be called at a pet store or an expo. It's usually a boa emperator if they call them this, so not a true red tail but their tail isn't as red, it's still pretty impressive. And they use it almost like prehensile, prehensile -y. I don't know if that's a real word, it's probably not. Oh, and yes, if you're watching this video and you're new to snakes and you're wondering, do they have a tail? See, like this is where, this is the vent, this is the tail. This is the body, vent, tail. So snakes do have a tail. They're not just a head with a really long tail. Now you know. Oh, and the vent is they, where they poo, they poo from the, the vent. So that's their poop shoot. Now, boas are gonna get bigger than ball pythons, which is usually why they're a great second snake for someone who likes constrictors. Now, this is my girl, Franny. I will say Franny is a bit of an outlier because she is kind of unpredictable. She's probably okay, but she huffs and puffs, and most boas have a really great temperament. And that's why they're such great larger snakes. And that's why a lot of people will get them over something like a berm, because they're just big enough that they're a big snake, but they're not big enough that I have to get help handling this thing. Especially if you get a BI that's only gonna get to around eight feet. Anything bigger than that, I'd recommend you have someone to help you. No snake wants to kill you, but I mean, if it thinks you're a tree and it holds onto you too tight, that could be the end. No more BC handling for you. Practice caution and be careful is what I'm trying to say without the doom and gloom here. Now, a lot of people will say that these are not semi-arboreal snakes, but they are. If you give them an opportunity to be in the trees, if you go out to their native range in Central and South America, that's where you're going to find them, especially when they're young, but even when they get big, even when they're 10 pounds plus, Franny is 12 pounds, 
She uses every bit of perch that we give her. If I take her out and put her on a chair, if I get a mic stand, if I get a boom pole, if I get uh, me, she's gonna climb whatever it is and use the opportunity. You're never gonna find her on the ground unless she doesn't have an option otherwise. Now these come in many different morphs, tons of morphs, motley and albino and all sorts of different stuff. Now just be aware that these are very cheap so if you're looking for a snake to breed, I wouldn't recommend breeding classic or normal morph boas. They're live bears, they give birth to a lot at a time, and they're really, really cheap. You can find these like a regular BCI for 50 bucks, probably. I'm probably confusing the crap out of you. BCC and BC are the same thing. BCI and BI are the same thing, because in the snake world, we like to change stuff all the time to make it more confusing. I don't know why. Okay, number two, Smooth and rough green snakes. These are a North American colubrid that you're gonna find for sure in the trees. Almost never you're gonna find them on the ground. But if you find them in the trees, you've got one heck of an eye. I have been looking my entire life. I've found maybe three or four of these things. They're everywhere. And often I'll be with someone else who has better eyes and they'll be like, what is that? There's a green snake. And it's always a smooth green snake. That's what we have around here most often. Now, rough green snakes get a little bit bigger than smooth green snakes and they have a keeled scale. That's the difference. Otherwise, the care is basically the same. They have similar ranges. Those are the only discernible differences to you or in terms of keeping them as a pet that really matter. So rough green snakes are bigger. They're gonna get to maybe two and a half feet. We're two, two and a half feet. We're smooth green snakes. They're gonna be a little bit smaller and they're gonna top out at around 20 inches. So they're really small. Now, what does a super small snake like to eat? Well, insects, of course. Well, not of course, but they do. They'll eat insects and things like that. Again, if you are getting any of these snakes, don't just do it because you watch this video. Watch care guides, do research, the whole thing. But I think these are really cool snakes, a little bit fragile, I would say. So unless you're very careful, definitely don't just hand this off to a child and hope for the best. You might have a some assembly required snake by the end of it because they are fragile because they are so small but they're definitely not going to hurt you. They are not venomous. They are completely harmless to a human. And even if a smooth or rough green snake were to latch onto you, you'd probably have to like look down to even notice what it is. My main gripe with green snakes is simply that they're most often wild caught because there's not a lot of captive breeding going on. They are super tiny when they come out of the egg. So I, I would recommend if you do find one, try to find one that's captive. And if you find one that you, you have to have it, you absolutely must have it, then for sure make sure that you're getting one that doesn't have parasites or has been treated for parasites, or you take it to a vet immediately to get it treated for parasites. Things in the wild don't live great lives in terms of parasiticness. Parasites getting, I am the dumbest. All right, let's get them back out here. <laughs> get off my thumb. Okay, let's get them back out. Number one, spotted pythons. Now this is a, I would say, sub-adult spotted python. Believe it or not, he's not gonna get that much longer. He's about three feet already. So he might get around four feet. Now I do feed him pretty well, but not enough that I would say he's like power fed because these guys on rare occasions can get to six feet like this one you'll see here. So thank you very much Reptiles of Lustria for bringing this animal to show me at a reptile expo a few months back. But generally a spotted python is going to get four feet tops, maybe five. Or if you want something even smaller, the whole genus Antaresia, which come from Australia, by the way. So we're talking about spotted pythons, Stinson's pythons, children pythons, and anthill pythons. Now anthill pythons are oftentimes called pygmy pythons. And that's just simply because, well, they're tiny. They are some of the smallest snakes in the entire world. In fact, they are the smallest python in the entire world. So as far as tiny pythons, the spotted pythons are actually the giants of the spotted python family in that they're the biggest of Antaresia. Okay, we don't normally get this science-y, let's just move on. Not a ton of morphs outside of Australia, so this is kind of what you get, but they will use height, and because they are kind of a tiny python species, you don't need massive enclosures. I'm not saying use a small enclosure. I mean, you see how this guy is climbing and he's kind of crazy, but I wouldn't uh, recommend like an eight foot enclosure for these guys, that's kind of overkill. You could easily find something that you can buy is what I'm trying to say here is, so you don't have to worry about building something or getting something custom made for you. Like you would with say a reticulated python or even a really big emerald green tree python, that's not a thing. Or even a really big emerald tree boa, like a basin, Amazon basin that might get to nine feet. 
which didn't make the list, but honorable mention, they're pretty awesome. And that's the really cool thing about Antaresia, spotted pythons, we'll just say, to make it easier. Uh, they're so perfectly sized, in my opinion. If you want something even smaller than a ball python and something that exhibits a little bit different characteristics and that it doesn't really have issues eating, your face is so cute. You are adorable. And a more classic type arboreal behavior, because although ball pythons will move around in the trees or on perches, uh, Antaresia, I put him back because he was getting a little huffy and puffy. They just navigate a little bit more gracefully. So if that's what you're after, you're after something that is graceful in the trees, and Antaresia really can't be beat. They are my number one pick, I love them. So what do you think? Do you agree with my picks? Do you think that I was a little off base on this one? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear it. And while you're down there, if you don't mind, hit the like button, hit subscribe. Those things cost you nothing and help this channel more than you could ever know. Oh, and a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. Thank you so much for all you do. You get extra videos, discounts on the merch. You know about this reptile room and have seen it in detail long before now and a few extra reptiles in my collection I haven't told anybody about. For as little, little as a dollar a month, you can be part of the Patreon team too. Like I just barrel along as if I didn't screw that. For as little as a dollar a month is what I'm, okay, that's enough. Because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Monday.